This is Sunday morning. It's September 15th. We're going to continue with the seven core principles of LCM. Today we will be on the subject of full price. I want to remind you that what has been laid out in that all the board message is that every life fundamentally must be transformed and that we focus on every single life that God brings in front of us. We are not into mass development. In this church, if you are here as an individual, you are important to us. Amen. You are not a number. We don't say cheeky little things like, well, hey, there's a name attached to every one of those numbers. <laughs> we want to know you. We want to see your life transformed. Amen. This church is about the DCD. Come Some on. say that the DCD is don't care a damn for this world. And those yeah. people are right. But the other thing the DCD is, is disciples that create disciples. Yeah. Yeah. We are not a group of mere believers. We are certainly no. not a group of mere followers. We are men who are learning to be what Jesus Christ is yes. in our daily life. Amen. Come on. To do that, today we're going to be speaking about full price, and then we will move to families and nations in the weeks to come. Open your Bibles to Genesis 23. Amen. Somebody, when you get there, say there. You're all going to have the opportunity to speak in this service. If I notice that I don't hear from you at any time, then I will put a mic in your hand. So I suggest that you stay with us today. Come on. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do have, it. Yeah, have, have no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Are you in Genesis 23? Yeah. Is everybody in Genesis 23? Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah. Genesis 23, beginning in verse 7. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf. Put that into perspective. This man is grieving. He has lost the love of his life. Yeah. Now, Many of us in here are not old enough to be able to put that into perspective. But as a young pastor, I saw a man that had been married 50 years lose his wife. And every day, he got up and went and walked into where her closet was just to smell her clothes. He would go sit in her car just to remember what it was like to be sitting. Abraham has lost the love of his life. Somebody say, that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. And he asked for something. Verse 9, so he will say, sell me the cave of Machpelah, which belongs to him. It is at the end of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price. Yeah. Full price. Yeah. We live in a time period where if somebody goes on a singing show, they have to tell you they were born as a crack baby. <laughs> if somebody is selling uh, some product, they have to tell you why they came from a disadvantaged situation. Notice that Abraham does not claim any disadvantage. No. In the most heart-wrenching situation that he's in, what does he want to do? What does he want to do? Full price. There's a reason. You're willing to pay full price when you value something that much. Yeah. And the more you pay for something, the more you value it. Amen. If you buy a $500 sled, you'll park it in a garbage dump. But you buy something that's new, that you love, that you had to sacrifice for, you put three spaces between it and everything else. How much Christ cost you is directly proportional to how much you value Him. Yeah. It's been too cheap. It's been too easy. We've got such a greasy gospel that we have lost the value of Christ. I want to regain that this morning. Amen. Do you? Yeah. He said, sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Come on, full price. Full price. Full price. Ephraim the Hittite was sitting among his people, and he replied to Abraham in the hearing of all of the Hittites, who had, who had come to the gate of his city. No, my Lord, he said, listen to me, I give you the field. Mm. Not only is he disadvantaged poor Abraham, but he doesn't claim it, because you can't make a man of God a victim. Come Amen. on. But even when somebody else says, look, look, I'll give it to you, he doesn't go, oh, it's a blessing. <laughs> That's a blessing. Abraham was not willing to receive something that cost him nothing. That's right. He knew what this was worth and he wanted to pay yeah. the price. Yeah. Do you want to pay a price? Yes. yes! We live in a cheap, 
easy Christianity and it has produced greasy and crappy results. Wow. If you want to see real men of God, if you want to see things happen that happened in the first century, it will always be for men who paid the full price. Amen. That's right. Verse 12. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and he said to Ephraim in their hearing, listen to me, if you will, I will pay the full the the price of the field accept it from me so that i can bury my dead there ephraim answered abraham listen to me my lord the land is worth 400 shekels of silver i don't even have time to tell you how egregious that price is yeah. abraham doesn't bat an eye he hears that it's 400 shekels of silver with the explanation but hey what's that between you and me bury your dead sounds like a funeral salesman Abraham agreed to Ephraim's terms, and he weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites. I want you to understand, Abraham didn't bat at the price even for a minute. No. This is Hebron in Israel today, and there are still sons of Abraham streaming there because we know he's under the earth right there in his physical presence. But in the kingdom, that is where he's walking right out of the grave. Yeah, yeah. The thing that is easy to miss is Abraham was not paying full price for a grave. No. He was paying full price for the hope of the resurrection. Yes. Yes. This is why we can't lessen the gospel. This is why we can't just boil it down to something that everybody can agree on. The resurrection of the dead Come is on. at stake. Amen. Come on. It's worth paying full price. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth having a full yeah. price attitude. This is a full price house. Amen. This house is full a full price faith. Yeah, it is. All around us, there are half price bargain deals. Whew. They promise the resurrection for less commitment than it takes them to put hair gel in their slick back hair and their skinny jeans and their bleached white teeth. Mm. I say, name the price, Ephraim. Yes. Name it. Go ahead. Come on. Name it. Because I'll gladly pay any price. Full price. Jesus Christ is worth it. The resurrection of the dead is worth it. This is not fake wood. This is LCM. Yes. We pay the full price at LCM. Yeah, we do. Jesus paid the full price for my transformation. Because of that, the transformation that has happened in me makes me want to pay the full price for Him. Yeah. Come on, man. The more He cost you, the more he's worth to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you lost everything, then he's worth everything to you. That's right. If you didn't lose everything, then he might not be worth to you what you kept. Come on. More than that, I want to pay the full price for him, I want to pay the full price for them. Amen. Yes. Yeah. The hope of the resurrection is worth the full price. Yes. Yeah, it is. Help us out, Brother Cody. Woo. Hey, Cody's a Stevens now. Yeah. Are y'all excited today? Oh, yeah. Are y'all full of joy and energy that we may get what the Lord has for us today? Yes. Not just scheme by, not just be tired, and, but actually grab from the heavens what he has for you. We're with you. Hey, man, let's turn to 1 Samuel 18, 25. Ooh. Stay there when you're there. I am there. I'm there. I'm there. Come on now. Come on now. We're going to have a good day today. Yeah. We're going to have a fire-filled day, and we're going to get what he has for us. Yes, we will. And verse 25 says, Saul replied, Say to David, the king wants no other price for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskins. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Say that That's again. That's a high price to pay. <laughs> <laughs> to take revenge on his enemies. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. That didn't work. When the attendants told David these things, he was pleased to become the king's son-in-law. <laughs> Come on. My goodness. So before the allotted time elapsed, David and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. He brought their foreskins and presented the full number to the king Come so on. that he might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave his daughter Michael in marriage. Man. Wow. wow. Come on now. We know that LCM that we pay the full price yeah we do do you want to pay it yes. do you want to pay it yes come on we know that men's standards are not enough can i get an amen amen we always go beyond to pay that full price yes 
When our king sets a standard, it's always our aim to go above and beyond to please him. We must have a Matthew 8, 10 kind of faith. That this is a centurion's faith. That Jesus said, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Come on. Come on. Do y'all have someone inside here that has a centurion's faith to see the impossible possible? Yes. Amen. Do you? Yes. Do you really? Because I can tell you in my own life, I've seen this very thing come to pass. Amen. You know what? You know where it's at? It's sitting right on this front row. Woo! Because for me, it wasn't 200 foreskins. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you would have done it, though. Would've I would have done it. Done it. <laughs> That's why God gave you brothers. We had all done it. Yeah, praise <laughs> the Lord. But for me, you know, I almost lost my way in this. And I, I'm bringing this up because it wasn't 200 foreskins, but it was a young man asking a father, say, man, I'm in love with this beautiful, sexy, amazing woman. Let me just give a praise <laughs> bake real quick. But I was asking, I said, Dad, how do I obtain something like this? And he looked at me and said, son, a noble task. This is what you have incurred upon. But you know what I want you to do? Why don't you give me a hundred stones, and we'll talk about it after that. What's a stone? Woo, a stone is a scripture, not just a scripture. You know what I'm feeling? Wait, it's not just a scripture. Yeah. But it's a scripture that you know that, you, that you're a looking, just killer. as David looked at Goliath. He said, I'm going to kill that thing. Yeah. This was a hundred stones, a hundred scriptures that I was going to present so I could have the opportunity to talk about anything moving forward. But you know what? In LCM, we're a full gospel, full price kind of house, right? Yeah, we are. So I looked at it, I was like, man, I looked at the beautifulness of my wife to be now. And I looked and I was like, man, man, she's not just worth 100. Lord, I'm going to take that. I'm going to go 200. Come on. Yeah. You know what? Just a little bit of faithfulness happened. She has my son. Woo! Yeah. I'm wearing a ring. Come on. And the amazing thing is, with just a little bit of faith and a whole lot of full price attitude, the Lord accomplished exactly what he had. That's a good word. Come on. But you know, it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always just, you know, I was pursuing this. You know, I, I, I almost, whoo, I almost got me a half price bride. Yeah. Uh-oh. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm you don't want one of those. So. T- Come on. I, I repented, brothers. I repented. But you know what? It wasn't even just a half price bride. It was, I'm even a little ashamed to say it. It was a bargain deal kind of bride. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about that discounted and dented and damaged discount sale. You know what I'm talking about. We know oh, what you're talking about. We know what you're talking, talking about. about. That kind of, that kind of bride that you couldn't give away, that you couldn't return. But you know what I did? Lost the receipt. What'd you do? Whew. You know, I had to say, but I said, heavens forbid, I'm going to give me a full price. Come on. Oh, yeah. You know, Jesus paid the full price for me and my transformation. And y'all can see that clearly because of my transformation. Now I want to pay the full price for him. And even more than that, I want to pay the full price for the body of Christ. Will you pay it with me, body? Yeah. Yeah. Pay it with me, church. Yeah. Should Jesus get a half price bride? No. no. Should Jesus get a bargain discount no. at the dented and discounted store? See, I believe that he deserves a bride who wants him as much as he paid for her. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Do you have anything to say about that, Mrs. Stevens? Ooh. I mean, did you want to preach today? You sure, Mom? Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh. Oh. We got happened? another Mrs. Stevens oh, in the yeah. house. Yeah. I want to say something. <laughs> say something. I grew up in this house. Yeah, you did. This is a full price house. Woo! I'm a woman designed by God to become someone's wife. Hello. Woo! Whoa. I have been raised to be given away. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Yeah, it's true. Before I am ever given to my husband, there's something I have to tell you. Ooh, let, tell them. Let's go to Esther 4.12. Oh, man. Oh, you there when you're there. Let Mrs. Stevens know when you're there. There. All right, we have one person. Let's go. Oh, go ahead. Get him, Abby. Get him. Woo! There. We're all there. Okay. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, 
He sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. I couldn't just sit there and remain silent. Nope. I am here in this position for a time like this. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 15. When Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Oh. That's full, price. That's full price. I grew up in this house. Yeah, you a did. A full price house. Amen. Before I'm given to a man, I must be given to a king. Woo! Woo! I'm going to say that again. I, don't... I want to make sure everybody heard that. <laughs> given to the king before given to a man. Woo! Mm-hmm. That's full price. That's full price. He paid full price for me. I want to pay full price for him. If I perish, I perish. The truth is, I'm losing my life. And that means I'm gaining it. Yes. Do you want to pay full price to get to the king? Yes. Amen. Who wants to pay full price with me? Amen. Come on. Come on. Say it with me, ladies. Given to the king? Then give it to a man. Oh, say it One again. more time, Ooh. I want to hear you louder. Give it to the king. Give it to the king. Then give it to a man. Give it to a man. I preach. That's you my guys sister. See this beautiful princess. Yeah. That's my sister. This full price daughter of God is my sister. And you know the man on my right is also my brother. And that's my brother as well. We would like to remind you all here and in the one association, that only a full price kind of man will be considered. We're watching you. We will find you. (laughs) All right, somebody turn with me to 1 Chronicles 21, verses 22 through 28. Amen. Let it loose. Somebody say full price when you get there. Catch it up. I've been trying to get... Mrs. Stevens to preach with me for 26 years. She raised up a disciple that is magnifying and going beyond what she does. Y'all still there? Okay. David said to him, let me have the sight of your threshing floor so I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people may be stopped. So sell it to me. At partial price. No. Oh. No. Discounted rate for the king. Oh, no. no. 20% off. Heaven no. Full price. Full Amen. price. Yeah. Aruna said to David, take it. Let my lord the king do whatever pleases him. Look, I will even give you the oxen for the burnt offering, the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give all this. Let me just stop and say, I'm a salesman. I may have said something like this once or twice in my life. But what does this cost David here? See, we talk about the price, and I'm always talking about the price when I'm doing these things, but we don't think about the cost that you have here. What does David lose if he takes this right here? But King David replied to Aruna, No! I insist on paying the full price. I will not take from the Lord what is yours or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing. So David paid Aruna 600 shekels of gold for the site. David built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord and the Lord answered him with fire from the heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord spoke to the angel and he put his sword back in its sheath. Praise God. In our time, there are half-price altars everywhere. Ooh. Those half-price altars, they don't stock the plague on the people. They proliferate it. They increase it. They propagate it. And those same altar builders profit from it. Mm. 
These discount pimps are running a dent and damage sale. Come on. But it's not the bride of Christ. This is a full price house. Yes. yes. At LCM, we insist on paying the full price. He paid the full price for me. I will pay the full price for him. Yeah. Come on, who in this room wants to see fire from heaven fall? We had a worship where God is trying to stir something up inside of us. And I think the astute men in the room know that we didn't quite get there. Do you want to get there? Yes. Are you ready to give full price for it? Yes. Then as is fitting on such a wondrous day that Ezra, Erigena, was born. Yeah. Turn to the book of Ezra. We're going to be in the eighth chapter when you arrive at Ezra. Verse 22. You can go ahead and say Ezra when you get there. If you want the power of the Holy Ghost, say Ezra Manasseh. Ezra Manasseh. Ezra Manasseh, Manasseh, Erigena, was a full prophet. This is one that took years in the making. Come on. This is one of those that we all looked at from a distance and wondered whether or not the price was worth the result. Standing next to them watching miscarriages happen again and again. I personally watched my friends and wondered whether we were getting something wrong here, whether this price was really supposed to be this high, whether the full price was what God was asking of us. But the proof of their faith is here today in their arms. Hallelujah! Ezra 8, 22, there is another kind of audacious full price faith. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from the enemies on the road because we had told the king... (laughs) Got pause right here for just a minute. How many times have you said something that was fiery, faithful in a moment, and then you began to realize the ramifications of it afterwards? I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from the enemies on the road because we had told the king the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him. Say everyone. Everyone. But his great anger is against all who forsake him. See, in this moment... We see that Ezra has proclaimed something before the kings of this earth. He said, our God's hand is upon us. Those who seek him, those who are looking for him. And now, God is demanding the full price of that. See, when we are bold in our full price faith, we also have to come to a place where we summon the courage to stand on it as well. Amen. In this room, we preach very well. And some of us preach better than we live. The extent of that, though, is that right now we have the opportunity to begin to be men who full price with their actions, who full price with their attitude, full price with their faith. I want to stand with full price in our actions. I do, too. Yeah. See, we ought to learn to be careful with our words, especially for young men. This is something that the epistles repeatedly warn about. And there is something about having stood in faith and spoken and then the shame that results when we do not follow through with full price. That's not full price. This message is one that is exciting because we're going to live in full price. Yes. Yes, we are. And I'm also staring at eyes in the room. Men and women that I know that I was in worship with. How many times have you chosen... Not to walk out the full price that you've per- professed with your faith. Too many See, Ezra, a man of God, was ashamed of that concept. Right now, what begins to wipe away our shame is when we realize how we have been living. How much we have spoken about. How much we have heard. How much is available. Yeah. And we begin to live full price. Amen. Something in us begins to rise up yes. that says, No, the hand of God is on my life. Yes. I'm a man that has the king's stamp and it's not a worldly king. Amen. We ought to learn to be ashamed to live with anything less than full price. That's right. Say, pay it with me. Pay Pay it with me. Get yourself in that truck. Come on. Can somebody say, get yourself in that truck? Get yourself 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 in that truck. truck. In LCM, surrounding the concept of full price, there was a saying that developed with the young man while we worked. The idea was that none of us should watch somebody else pay the full price and stand idly by. Yeah. Are you going to stand idly by today or are you going to join in with us? No, we're, join in. we're going to join in. See, I know you. You're the kind of church that likes to join in. Yeah. See, Christ paid the full price for me. 
And I want to pay the full price for him. Yeah. But us together, we must pay the full price for them. The one that the Lord spoke about in prophecy through our service. Those hearts, those minds that he is burning yeah. for. Come on. That is found in a full price gospel. I want to tell you that in Genesis 14, about verse 14, Abraham, he calls out 318 trained men from his house. This is our house. We are raising up trained men who Come are Talmudim yeah. in the faith. This is our house. During the night, they rallied and moved out. And they went to go fight four kings. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, LCM, that one family, one house on. that is willing to give full price is able to challenge Come four on. kings. Woo! Come on. That the armies yeah. of this world, the physical, spiritual, natural, it doesn't matter when there is a house of fully trained men that will give the full Come price. On. At 1 Kings 18, there is one prophet that faces a combined 850 pagan prophets. Wow. But he was willing to pay the full price. Yeah, Come was. on. Man, full that's price. the best job he ever had. Woo! Best job I ever had has been developed through persecution. <laughs> there are moments when we realize we are so outnumbered and outgunned, but we are willing to give it at all, and God favors us. It's what we call a target-rich environment. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot miss, Pastor. In Second Chronicles 14, in the 11th verse, there's a prayer that is beautiful. It describes how God is able to defend the powerless against the mighty, that there is no one like him. This man had backed himself into a corner. This is Asa's prayer. He positioned himself in a place where full price was his only option. I want to ask you today in this room, are you holding on to a back door? Are you holding on to a second option? Or are you all the way in? All the way in. Say full price has no reserve. Full price has no reserve. Full price has no complaint. We're going to do that one one more time. Full price has no complaint. Full price has no complaint. A complaint is a part of you that is invested in something other than the price of Christ. Woo! We're going to remove that today and we're going to be all in, all chips, yeah. completely down. Amen. Brothers, teach us out of Matthew. I actually want to jump in on something. Oh, go ahead. I remember, go ahead. I remembered something from the early days. Ooh. How many of you are full of the Holy Ghost? Yep. Hallelujah. How many of you want to see the gifts of the Spirit? Yes. yes. Drama is not a fruit of the Spirit. Ooh. We need to revive that one more often. We put that on the backs of our cars for years. It caused more conversations mm. in the city of Sugarland than you can imagine. Come on. Look, if we're going to pay full price, it can't be words only. Amen. Yeah. It can't be. And in a time where churches accept chase pay. I think we need to look at a crucifixion slow pay. I think we need to begin thinking of not paying the full price in one blazing glorious moment, but paying the full price every day for 20 yeah. years until you move the mountain into the sea that Christ told you to move. Come on. What kind of full price attitude do you have? Are you hoping to muster it up in one masculine moment in a blaze of glory? Or do you wake up every day saying, it is my joy to be crucified yes. with Christ. Yes. I'll pay it out over time, but I will not leave it unpaid. Amen. See, that's the attitude we have to cultivate. Pastor Wade was teaching us on Sunday about a house of heroes. Come on. The moment of faith men are Hollywood heroes. Yeah, We're going to be something totally different. We're going to raise up a memorial that lasts into the heavens. I was reminded of another saying. What? One more time. One more time, Lord! The, the beautiful thing about it not being a moment is if yesterday wasn't so good, you didn't miss your moment. Praise the living God. You wake up every day and one more time. One more time, Lord. One more time, give me the faith to reach. Then you don't ever have to look back and go and say, is it too late? If you woke up this morning, one more time. Turn with me to Matthew 14, verses, starting verse 3. I'm timing you, Sasha. You getting there? <laughs> I notice our Hispanic Mrs. Stevens got there immediately. That girl's a pastor's daughter. And she's going to be a pastor's wife. She got that lightweight ink. Yes, she is. Y'all there? Still full price? Full price. 
Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Somebody say that's gross. That's That's gross. gross. Herod wanted to kill John for obvious reasons, but he was afraid of the people because they considered him a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for them and pleased Herod so much. We're talking, that's also gross. We're talking about his niece. I mean, that's gross. That he promised. Um, Herod wanted to kill John. On Herod's birthday, his daughter Herodias danced for them and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted and had John beheaded in prison. I got to step in here. How many moms? We're going to get it today. How many moms? You can see the importance of what it is to have a godly mother. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. The reality is, is that mothers have a place in a daughter's heart. How, How powerful is the tongue Whenever you're walking in day-to-day life, whether it's through text, whether it's through phone calls, that we don't manipulate, but we encourage, we don't, we don't distract, we put them back on track. Yeah. Can on. I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. How important, we saw little Abby sitting here, yeah. and I promise you she didn't get that way just overnight. No. She didn't have a mother that said, hey, I want you to go sin so I can benefit from it. Wow. I want to encourage the mothers in the room, let's check our hearts. Let's check our motives. Let's check our actions. Because how powerful is a mother's sway on a daughter? Wow. I promise you, we're going to get it. We see little Abby here, and she's one of many in the room that is a prime example of what it looks like to be a godly mom. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to be on target, on sight, and aware that not in this house. Because we're a full price kind of house. We're this is a full, full price house. Full price kind of women that are marrying men that are worthy of the king and worthy of Come our on. daughters. Mm. Yeah, she turned her daughter into a murderer in a single day. Yeah. But that's not John. Nope. John was something else. John was a full price kind of man. Yeah, he was. In fact, he lost his head for it. Now, I'm not talking about lost his head, like we lose our head, like I lose my head, like, you know, pastor, I... Yes, you Why are you laughing so loud, <laughs> loud Ray? <laughs> Who I... in here has ever lost their head in a situation? Okay, when we say lose our head, we don't usually mean because we were martyred for Christ, we mean we lost our head and sinned against Christ. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about two different kinds of losing your head. You know, pastor, I just lost my head for a moment. Oh. But come on, John loses his head for confronting sin. He paid the full price for it. And we're not talking about normal sin here. This is, this is some messed up stuff with a powerful man. That with a single word, it could have cost him his head and he did it anyway. Somebody say John was full price. John, John was, full was full price. price. See, Jesus paid the full price for your transformation from a sinner to a son. Now that I'm being transformed... I want to pay the full price to confront sin in my own life. Yeah. Come on, does somebody have the courage in here to pay the full price to confront sin in their life? Yes. Whatever it costs you, no matter how bad it hurts. Yes. Yes. See, I want to pay the full price. And once, once I can get my life in order and I'm paying the full price, then I have the unique opportunity to rescue others, yeah. to help Amen. them pay the full price. Yeah. You want to help others pay the full price? Yeah. You want to rescue others? You want to lose your head for paying the full price? Yeah. See, I think this is that kind of a church. Yeah. It is. And the Apostle Paul is an extraordinary example of a full price gospel. This is represented. You good? I want your mic. Uh, I want them all the kids. Y'all want to hear Judah? Yeah. Yes. I will fix that so that we can record it. <laughs> Amen. The Apostle Paul is an extraordinary example of a full price gospel. This is exhibited in numerous examples. Where we want to center today, though, is in Acts 21 in the 10th verse. Say full price when you get there. Full price. Much like John lost his head for a full price, unashamed gospel. Come on. Paul suffered many things because he represented our Christ. 
that was full price. The degree to which men treat you like Jesus is a fantastic indicator to the degree to which we are full price. Come on. See, we may feel full price in the moment, but we're working to reach the fullness of Christ. Yeah. I want to read you something, and I want you to internalize it. I want you to think about it as if it were you and how you would respond. After we had been there a number of days, this is the 10th verse, a prophet, come on now, a prophet, somebody's coming to give you a, an encouragement. Bim came up to you. Named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says to you, In this way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. Wow. <laughs> hand him over. <laughs> what would your response be to a prophetic vision like this? In a charismatic service, do you get excited when somebody wants to give you a word? Are you hoping that God wants to give you an encouragement? Man, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to lift your spirits. See, I've seen it in many different ways. I've seen men get words that were divine, that were of God, and had difficulty in them. And rather than it spurring their faith on, it shook them and left fear inside of them. Oh, no. I've had men have rebukes that came from a vision that was of God. And instead of repenting, they repulsed and got offended. Hmm. There are all kinds of different responses to a vision of God. But if somebody came up to you, and said, I'm going to bind your hands and feet, and you're going to be handed over at some point in time in the near future. What is it that would be racing through your mind? You'd be thinking about your children, thinking about your wife, your job, your house note. I want to tell you what ran through the Apostle Paul's mind while all of his friends and family are standing around him. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Who is this? This is the disciples that traveled with him, the ministry partners right. that labored and suffered with him. This Come is on. everybody that he values and cares about in the world. Yeah. Then Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for Come the on. name of the Lord Jesus. Full That's full price. I'm ready not only to be bound, but also to die. Come on. Not I am willing, not I'll do it if I have to, he says, I am ready. Yeah. I'm ready to pay the cost. I want to pay the cost. If that is what God desires, I'm heading headlong into it. How many of you would hear about your martyrdom coming in the near future while you still have friends, family, children, obligations, churches that you're responsible for all around you? And you'll go, I am ready. I want to go I get it ready. right now. Yes, With Lord. Yes, can somebody Lord. in the room be stirred up by the Holy Ghost to a holy yeah. zeal? Yes. When he would not be dissuaded, come on. we gave up and said the Lord's will be done. Yeah. You see a unique turn in verse 15, though. After this, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. Ooh. Man, when a man gets a vision in his heart yeah. and he has full price, it begins to affect everyone else around come him. On. See, you know when you really have a full price heart, a yeah. full price cost, when other people are inspired by it standing next to you. Yeah. See, a full price cannot be hidden. It can't be hidden under a bushel. It can't be neatly tucked away at work or with your family. When you really have it, it can be yeah. seen by men. Come on. The response that often comes out of our heart, out of my heart, out of men like us, when we feel difficulty, when we feel like we're making a sacrifice, is a clear indicator for our own life that there's an area that we really haven't given the Lord everything and paid the full price. See, it is all too often that we give the Lord what we think we needed to, what we think we had to. And we take things inside of our life and we put ownership of it. Yeah. We say, this part of my life, my house, my vehicle, my job, this time belongs to me. See, we often will hear and we correct it amongst each other and friends and family in the church. People speaking about what a sacrifice it was to attend X and X meetings that the schedule was so difficult. We hear people talking about how difficult it was to make the drive or to lay down a house. Wow. I want to tell you in this room that when you really have a full price inside of your heart, those feelings of great sacrifice are diminished entirely. Come on. And you become a man that can be staring martyrdom in the face and there is an overwhelming, powerful zeal that is growing in you. Not the opposite. Yeah. 
See, what we need in this room is to really be full price, not to have reservations, not to have inhibitions, not to have some pocketed area that we're holding on to. Come on. Because we find real freedom when we pay it all. Yeah. I want to tell you, though, frankly, it's never a one-time event. We find areas again and again and again. And I think very clearly in this room, God is speaking to some of you saying, how long will you wait? I've spoken to you about what I want you to cast in the pot now, what I want you to lay down at the altar now. And he's telling you, how long will you wait today? Now is the time for you to be full price. God is reinforcing this principle because he's not willing for you to continue with your life without doing it. That we cannot live knowing that we are giving part of what Jesus has called us to and less of it. You know, Ananias and Sapphira claim to give full price. Many people claim to give full price. But when we are standing in the presence of God, a pretty face won't get you anything. Yeah. Your pretty language won't get you anything. What will get you something is being right with the Spirit of God in the center of your soul that you are accomplishing what you're made for. Come on. Are the men of LCM willing to fight for that? Yeah. Are you going to let anything keep you from that? No. Cody is going to tell us about the attitude that we must have with that cost and sacrifice. Actually, Cody's dad's going to jump in for Ooh, a second. Get it, Pop. Come on, Pop. Every just... once in a while. My soul gets stirred hearing my children share things that the Lord has shown them. And I, I want to not leave this for just a second. Proverbs 13 says something. It says something profound. Before we mention it, I want to tell you that Paul was physically threatened here. He was coerced by his friends to not go. I mean, it just wouldn't be wise, you know. It's just not prudent. Mm. Is it safe where y'all are going? Pastor, that's irresponsible. Yeah, oh yeah. You, you take your kids children there? there? Oh my God. Y'all must be a cult. Yes, we are. Sure. The extent... <laughs> the extent to which you feel threatened. The extent to which you can be threatened. Is how much you still have to pay... Because you're not yet full price. See, if something being taken from you, including your life, is a threat to you, then you own it and you did not pay it to the Lord. Ooh, Preach it now. See, you can't have everything that is Christ because you haven't given up everything that's yours. Ooh. Proverbs 13 says, the poor man hears no, no threat. threat. Jesus Christ said, blessed is he who is poor in spirit. Are you seeing what our problem is? Come on. Now, if you're a guest here and you're like, they're talking about money a lot. We're not talking about money at all. <laughs> don't you think any. you can write a check and buy us off? I don't want your money. I want your life because that's what Jesus Christ demands. Come on. He said, if any man would come after me, not some men, if any man would come after me, he must take up his cross. So I'm asking you, where's your cross? Mm. See, if you're going to receive payments in business, you have to have one of those Mark of the Beast scanner things. Ooh. If you're going to pay your life daily in Christ, you're going to have to be crucified daily. Where's your cross? When's the last time you were on it? When is the last time you died a little bit for Jesus? Mm. See, it's easy to say, I got a full price attitude. Well, would others... Say you have a full price attitude born out in your actions. Ooh. See, this is everything. When you heard Cody's testimony earlier and he's talking about paying a full price for a bride, how many of you beautiful women in here dreamed of a day when somebody would come up and say, you know, I'd give a whole $3.30 to marry you. You dreamed about men fighting dragons and climbing towers and slaying enemies and rescuing you and women for centuries have. Do you know why? Because it speaks of your worth. What somebody risks, what somebody spends, what somebody gives shows how much they value. How much do you value Jesus? Half price? Come on. No. Well, how do you value Him? Full price. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Cody. Yeah, this yeah. is Cody's first sermon as a Stephen. Yeah. 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 Man, I'm, the thought... That we can bear the marks of paying the full price. Amen. And you know, the glory is that, that no one has to know. And what the Lord is doing inside of us is that He's correcting us, He's forming us, but that 
that mark of a full price is not something to show off. It is not one, you don't see a man that comes to war and he shows you his wounds because he did what a soldier does and it doesn't matter what the cost is. We don't go and we don't meet together and we, we glory of paying the full price. We just look at each other, give a nod, and we know that the kingdom's being advanced. Because I don't know about you, but I, as I'm about to read in Luke 17, 9 through 10, it's a sobering word. Because yep. how many times in my life do I do some great feat? I feel like I finally am giving the full price. I just want to tell somebody about it. I just want to, I'm I, say I just want to share with somebody because, you know, it's not about me. It's about the Lord working through me. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't me, but, I mean, it was me. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You pay a little bit of what you hope will one day be a full price, and now you need to be rewarded with accolades. Woo. Not in this house. Can y'all say not in this house? Not, not in this house. house. I can tell you we're going to fix this thing today. Because yeah. me and Bonnie can get in the old Chevrolet. No, I'm just playing. We're not going to do that. <laughs> but I can tell you that this is the, the Lord's hand upon us. This word that we're getting is, is as much impacting us as it's impacting you because we need to grow up. That what we have is not just the one association, but it's the Lord encouraging us to fight the good fight. And not just fight it, but we're going to advance. Come on. And the question is, are we going to advance with the Lord? Yeah. I know Wade is. I know Pastor Eric. I know our elders. I know Matt is. And I want to go with that. I was just talking with a brother a couple days ago. I said, man, look at these amazing disciples. Man, look at Linton over there. Woo! Yeah. Look at, woo! I mean... What can we say That's about right. Linton? But I look at his life and I say, Lord, don't pass me by. I don't want to be passed up by, by the on. Bims, by the Lintons, by the, by the men of God and the women of God who are going after it. And you know what? It's up to us. And As we're I, asking you not to make it easy on us either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and as I was reading they this won't. in Luke 17, it starts out, it says, Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. That is our biggest goal. That the best job I ever had, best there's, a, I ever there's had. a whole lot behind that. But when we look at each other and we say, hey, brother, how was your day? Best job I ever had. It doesn't matter the stuff I've went through. It doesn't matter the bullets that was fired. It doesn't matter the wounds that I've taken. But it, I promise you, it's the best job I've ever had. Best job I've ever had. And we need that mentality. We need to get after it in this church. I need to get after it because you know what? We're a full price church. Yeah. We're going to have full price disciples. Come We're going to have full price children because the king is worthy of us paying Amen. the full price. Amen. See, a servant has a job to do. It is expected. It's an obligation. There's no special merit badge for doing what he was already supposed to be doing. But we are also born as sons and servants. There's an interesting concept here in the word that we work like servants and yet he has graciously bestowed sonship on you. Come on. What you find is that as sons who have an obligation like a slave, like a servant, that it is owed and nothing special to accomplish what you were set out to do. It becomes your delight to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Say my delight. My, my delight, delight is to sacrifice. Is to sacrifice. sacrifice. There is no sacrifice in it for a servant, but there is for a son of God that knows it's his job, but personally delights in Come it, on. personally delights in doing it, praising yeah. his king while he performs the action. See, it's not just enough to perform a full price. What we want is a full price that is a full spirit, a full emotion, a full representation of the will of God. We want to be singing praises. Come on. See, our Aguas Calientes team had the amazing opportunity to work with good brothers, do new ministry. And they were blessed by the joy of the Lord to endure all kinds of illness and sickness and thefts or loss or whatever <laughs> happened to that passport. Long car rides. <laughs> See, it's not just enough to do okay. what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. All too often, we go through the motions. I've been guilty of that more than anybody else. I'll be doing exactly what I know to do, what I've been trained to do. And yet somewhere in the middle of it, I lost that delight before yeah. the living God that I'm enjoying the next opportunity to accomplish what he's calling us to. So we don't want to just beat you up about your actions today. What we want you to do is stir up holy jealousy for his work. Yeah. Yeah. That Come says, on. 
man, somebody needs this from the one association. I'm not going to let Matthew get to it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. I, my, my brother needs this working on his car. Can I lend a hand? Can I help you? Somebody needs to get a word from the living God. Can I go get on my face and pray for them instead Amen. of me? We're trying to stir up a passion. What full price is in our lives is not just a principle. It's the way that we operate yeah. with each other. It's why we are brothers. It's why we work in unity together. Because it's full price for us, yeah. for our king, and then for those that are around us. And it's the joy, it is the passion of our life to push that envelope. It is how we stir other men up is by setting ourselves ablaze in this way. Come on. Can you imagine if every man, woman, and child in this room had a week where you were consistently seven days a week aiming for a full price? That was a fiery faith. What would that look like? We're going to see it. Can we find out? I can, I, I can hear the Rosales brothers back there. They'll talk to me today. Yeah. They're not scared. Where are you, LCM? Are you scared? Come on. Oh. The king paid the full price for me. I want to pay the full price for him. Too. We will pay the full price for them. Yeah, we will. Amen. You know, the most amazing thing happens. Brothers are born for and in adversity. Proverbs Amen. 17 says that. You can have a bunch of people at a hospital excited to see a miracle that is happening. After trial, after trial, after trial, watching somebody persevere, and now we're at that moment. And little thoughts creep in your mind. Like, man, got to get up early tomorrow. <laughs> got a big responsibility tomorrow. Drop it like flies. Mm, that's, that's and you look over and you see your brothers and they're like, we don't have to sleep. We're full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You know, I know people that didn't sleep at all last night. And... They're showing more enthusiasm than some of you who slept quite well last night. Well, the ghost is invigorating. See, it is our great joy yeah. to be in positions of weakness because we paid the full price. Amen. So many times people turn Paul's words into something he didn't say. He's not talking about weaknesses as in you are sinning and Christ is strong in that. Yeah. He's talking about the actual weaknesses of his physical body and Christ is strong enough to carry him through it when is the last time you so spent yourself that you needed Christ to carry you through your next task mm. now, I'm not talking about you spent yourself in sin I'm talking about you exhausted yourself for him come on look when people do things like this some are inspired by it man they're like oh yeah that's that's hardcore I, I want to be that others hate it and they hate it because it's a standard that they don't think they can reach, and so they just hate you for doing it. Yeah. I want to talk to you about some men like that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 11. Ooh, this is going to get good. Say Somebody price. say there when you're there. 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 Revelation 11, beginning in verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses. Come on. <laughs> they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Yeah. These are the two olive trees. Man, oh man. Okay. Somebody listened to the message olive tree recently? Yeah. Yeah. And the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power. Somebody say power. 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 Power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power. Somebody say power. Power. To turn waters into blood and strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. As often as they want. Come on. These two men were very much like Moses and Elijah. These two are the most powerfully anointed men of the years past in Moses and Elijah, and in the years to come. That's true. I want you to see something about the full price that they paid. It's after they are killed. I want you to see how the whole world reacts. Look at verse 10. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts. Wow. Now, John and Joy are two of my favorite Asian friends. 
When I was in the eighth grade, there was in my English class an Asian that had only been in our country for two years. English was not his native language. And he ruined the curve on every test. Our teacher graded on a curve, but the kid got a straight A every time. I did not, I was lost. I didn't like him. I, I, I actually, yeah, I didn't like him. This is how mediocre Christianity looks at real Christianity. They don't like it. They have to find a problem with it. They'll send gifts to each other when a real man of God does stumble. And the reason is because they now feel like it will be graded on a curve for them. I want to tell you there is no curve. There is full price or there is nothing. You either gave all of your life or you're still holding on to some and cannot have Christ. Sometimes the full price attitude will cost you the envy and hatred of all men. I, I know exactly what that is like, and it's the best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. had. ECD. Sometimes the full price attitude will cost you your life, if you're lucky. Look at verse 11. But after the three and a half days... A breath of God, from God, entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those that saw them. Come on, somebody, do not gloat over me, my enemy, for though I have fallen, yet will I rise. When you are full price for the Lord, you can have confidence that He is fully for you. Even if you fall, a full price attitude will fully restore you because it has no quit. In it. Yeah. You know, Dad, temporary failures. I can't hear you, boy. You know, Dad. Yeah. There you go. Temporary failures are the cost of permanent success. I think you should say that again. Temporary failures are the cost of permanent success. Anybody had a temporary failure? Yeah. For it to be temporary, it's only temporary because you don't plan on stopping because of it. There you go. Full price is only full price if we fight through failure to finish. Amen. If you stop halfway, then it's not full price. Stop, oh. stop 99% of the way, still not full price. No, it's one of those bargain deals. You get to be a low price bride for Christ. The kind that you would see walking somewhere in the Montrose. <laughs> or ready to settle.com. But we have a man to learn from in the scripture that... Uh, was familiar with the sting of failure, but achieved permanent success, and I'm really looking forward to meeting him one of these days. Tell us about it. Peter is mentioned 176 times in the Bible. That is more than pretty well all of the disciples combined. It's a lot. Yeah. Most of the time, it's being rebuked when his name is mentioned. <laughs> Um, there's no way around that. If you look in Matthew 14, Matthew 16, John 13, John 18, those are just a few of the famous recorded ones. But failure, failure gave him a full price kind of attitude because he didn't have a reputation anymore. He didn't have pride anymore. It actually kind of gave him a no hesitation kind of attitude. Amen. See, the other disciples had something still to lose, so they stayed in the boat. But Peter had nothing to lose. I got white clothes, at least I'm with Jesus. See, Peter knew what it was like for everyone to watch him sink into the water. Knew what it was like for everyone to watch him reject Christ. But instead of letting that defeat him, letting that cause more failure, there was a little bit of indignation that raised up in A little bit of, I ain't going to take this anymore. I can't have this anymore. I'm going to pay the full price. Whatever it costs, however long it takes, however far I have to go, if I have to swim, I'm getting there. Amen. I got nothing left. I paid the full price. See, he's the kind of man that at the end of his life, when he considered himself an elder, he decided to write us a couple books, and I am so thankful. Amen. Y'all turn to me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that in it you may grow up. Oh, yeah. The price of growing up, and we all know it in the physical, to learn to ride a bike, you have to scrape your knee. To learn to walk, you have to fall. That's, we know it. But as Christians, we 
we like to avoid all pain. We, we don't like there to be failure. Yeah, but like newborn right. babies, Boo. we yeah, have to learn to grow up. We have to take... Do you want to avoid pain? No. Do you want to avoid the marks of Christ? No. no. Paul said there's fellowship in the suffering Come of Christ. Come on. Yeah. But we have to grow up. You got to grow up. We got to grow up. You have to add faith and vigor. You have to go forward. This growing up process is a process. You don't grow up in a day. There's not a single day that you wake up and you're like, all right, I'm a mature Christian. I made it. I got my stamp now. Every day we wake up one more time. One more time, Lord, I'm going to take this. One more time, I'm going to try. One more time, I'm going to fight. See, failure should be your teacher, not your undertaker. Mm. That's a good word. Say it again. Mm. Failure should be your teacher, not your undertaker. Failure should grow a fire to fight to finality, to finish the fight, to fight to pay the full price. Full price. Y'all going to pay the full price? Yeah. Y'all going to pay the full price to the end, not just at service, not one day a week, but to the end. Yes. I want to pay the full price because Jesus paid the full price for me to grow up. I want to pay the full price for others to grow up. Amen. Do y'all want to pay the full price for others to grow up in Christ? Yes. Amen. We're getting close to closing, but we're not yet done. Let's turn to Luke 13, 23. You know, not many pay the price. You know, they eat the loaves, and they believe, but they are not at the crucifixion. Are y'all with me right now? We've, we've started off with something and we're, we're going to finish exactly where the Lord has for us, but you need to hold on. We're at an hour and one minute. And we're preaching about paying the full price and I need you with me. Because just, just, as, just as we're getting it, I need this as well. But it says that they eat the loaves, they believe, but they are not at the crucifixion. They do not cut away the flesh. They don't pay the price to enter. And in verse 23 it says, Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? No way. Everybody who raised their pinky, everybody who closed their eyes in a meeting, everybody who ever professed Christ, they, then they have to be saved. Is there not a man that's going to stand up and say that that's not correct? That that is incorrect? You know, we're, we're raising a full gospel, full price kind of men. This isn't a show. You can look at our lives and look and say, wow. They've paid and we're learning how to pay it more. Because as I read the scripture, I, I read the reality and the finality of what we're doing right now. That our decisions are going to last for eternity. As I read in 24, it says, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because many, I tell you, will, in, will try to enter and not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading and say, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know who you are or where you come from. Would the Lord look at you and say, I don't know who you are, I don't know where you come from? Because you haven't had the communion of paying the full price. You haven't enjoyed the fellowship of the sufferings. It's been more of a weight instead of a joy. I have. But then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But pastor, man, I, I came to church every other Sunday. Man, man, remember that fellowship that we had on, on Sunday night at your house? Excuses. Excuses for not paying the full price. And in verse 28, starting in verse 27, it said, But he will reply, I do not know who you are, where you come from. Away from me, you evildoers. But we ate with you. But we drank with you. We even read in Matthew 7, 21, But we prophesied. We cast out demons. Isn't that enough? Not for the full price gospel. 
Not for LCM, not for us, not for us who are constantly raising the standard for the little babies that we're holding in our hands. Because it's up to us to set what full price looks like. And the and the reality is, is that in verse 28, it says there will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from the east and the west, the north and the south, and they will take their place at the feast of the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first. And the first will be last. There will be those who count to say, Lord, I may be your last choice, but I'm going to be your best choice from now on. Lord, I know that I've passed the buck on paying the full price, that I've lived in comfort, that I lived in obscurity, I lived in not being open. Those are all excuses for not paying the full price. See, because I can tell you, I grew up in this house. And I plan on paying the full price to be at that feast of Abraham. You live in this house. You live in this house. These walls mean nothing. This sound system means nothing. You are what builds this house. The pillars, the walls, the foundation. This isn't something that's been built overnight. This has been decades and decades and decades of full price mentality. We are standing on the blood, sweat, and tears of men of God before us saying it doesn't matter what the cost is. I'm going to get it. I'm going to give it all because the Lord is worth it all and he gave the full price for me. We must pay the full price for them. We must pay the full price for them. For them, not for in this room, but for them. What must you grow? What area must you grow in that you have to get these LCM principles deep down inside you? What areas are you going around in your mind and you're like, man, I really want to get to that full price mentality, that that full price. What areas do you need to grow? Because I know what I do. I know what I need to grow. I know when I go to the altar, it's gonna, not going to be empty words, but it's going to be, Lord, don't count me out. God, don't count me out. I want to bear the marks of a full price gospel. I want to bear the marks of what it looks like to look Abraham and Moses in the eyes and to know I gave him my all. I don't want to see not one of us. Not one of us miss that opportunity because you know what? When your son looks at your eyes and he'll look at you and says, Daddy, what's your testimony? What did you give up for the kingdom? I'm struggling how to operate, how to live. What did you give up? And I don't want to look at my son with empty eyes and empty words and say, Look, son, I gave nothing. I actually want to have something of worth in this place. Whether it be absolutely destruction to me, just like we're saying, a platter with our very head on it. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I encourage you, it starts by planting your knees at this altar so that Christ's attitude can grow within you. See, I'm going to pray. And it's not an empty prayer, I promise you. That we're going to pray, we're actually going to get this thing. That this isn't an opportunity where we can wallow and we can get lost in our emotions. But this is a warrior realizing that he, that he was left from the battle. A warrior that says, no, heavens forbid, I'm not going to be left out. I'm not going to be left behind. I'm not going to sit back and not go on my watch because my brothers count on me. I want to pay the full price. I know you do. Let's stand to your feet. So mighty God. God, we say to hell with low living. God, we say we're not going to let others pass us by while you have given us everything we need. God of heaven, we're crying out. God, let us pay the full price, God. God, don't count us out, God. Don't let the Iraqis, don't let those who are suffering for your gospel, God, let us suffer for your name. God, we give our life to you now. God, let your name be glorified. God, may the Lamb receive the just reward of his suffering. 
in us, God, not in our neighbor, in us, God. Let our families grow. Let them grow. Let them grow that we may take this thing seriously, God, that we may accomplish a full gospel kind of thing. God, we love you, God. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is what it takes. Sacrifice is what it takes. Giving it all. Giving it all. That's what it takes. We surrender now.